tomorrow morning is the bourbon drop in Alabama. So I'm in an airport in Indianapolis. It's not looking good for us to get some decent bottles. What does the line look like? There are so many people here. The parking lot is completely full. Just get here after me. That's all I want you to do. Tomorrow morning is the bourbon drop in Alabama. And the bourbon drop, because it's a state-run system, every month they release some, some allocated stuff. But they save all the really hard to find stuff, your pappies, your B-Tacks, all of that's saved for the lottery at the end of the year. Now, I wasn't lucky enough to win one of the hundred spots in the lottery, but there's a walk-up line afterwards. The problem is, is I'm in an airport in Indianapolis and I need to get home. So I'm gonna go catch my flight. I'm running a little bit late, but I'm gonna go catch my flight. We're gonna land in Alabama here in a little while and then see if I can't go get in line and, and see what kind of bottles we can find. So I've just landed in Atlanta and already bad news. Just got a text that there are already 49 people in freaking line. We'll go, we'll see what's up, but it's not looking good for us to get some decent bottles. Realistically, we would want to be in that 30 to 40 range in the walk-up line. Like that's where the good bottles have been. At 50 something, you can get good bottles, but I'm still in freaking Atlanta. I'm still two hours away, so see how it goes. Great. As soon as the rain stops, there's a bunch of accidents on the freaking interstate. Google is telling me we're gonna have another hour delay before we get there. Not gonna be any whiskey left. I just don't think it's gonna be worth spending a night at, at 60 or 70. The good bottles really start to, to go away in the 50s typically. So even if they have a bunch of them, 60 or 70 is not, not gonna be a good situation. We'll find out here in a minute. When I get a little closer, I'll call and see what the line looks like and then we'll make that determination. Hey, what's going on, TJ? Oh, not much, man. Just uh, crossing the Alabama state lines. What does the line look like? Hoo-wee. There are so many people here. I don't even see the list. This list is going to fall apart. You know that, right? If it keeps going like that. They're doing roll call every hour. So anybody that's not here is kind of getting scrubbed. It's crazy. I mean, the parking lot is completely full. So what do you think the odds are that they just end up running off everybody? Nobody's getting really rowdy right now. So I don't think there'll be a huge issue with that. Everybody's kind of being docile right now. I'm probably 30, 40 minutes away. So you want to get there. Well, we're here. And there are a ton of people here already. We're freaking late. That's what that boils down to. Not going to do too well today, but let's see what everybody's up to. Looks like everybody's just hiding out over here having a tailgate. So got some cigars going. Folks just camping, just straight camping. What's wrong with these people, I man? Know. They're camping out for a bunch of bourbon. Just get here after me. That's all I want you to do. What's going on? What time did y'all get here? 3.40 today. What's wrong with you? That's what's wrong with the people who showed up on Thursday. I would have been here, but I've been in Indianapolis all week. So I literally cut my trip short to come back to this. So when we tell y'all we're waiting in line for whiskey, don't get it twisted. This is very much a tailgate. It's very much a party, right? You have folks just hanging out, tailgating doing whatever they do. They've got a TV set up over there. We'll figure out what they're watching here in just a little bit. It's just a bunch of people hanging out. And you know, this is bigger than usual. Don't get me wrong. This being the lottery where they drop the really, really hard to find stuff. It's much, much bigger than uh, just a normal monthly drop, but it's still just a bigger version of what we normally do. Oh, and I was also told that there's at least 200 bottles on table one. So in Alabama, a hundred win the lottery. So there's a hundred people that can come walk right up without coming standing in line and everybody else is in line. So I'm like 67, but not all of that 100 will show up. So realistically, I'll probably be 140, 150, and there's at least 200 bottles on table one. So table one's, you know, gonna be your pappies and your B-tacks and things like that. So I ought to be able to get something. We'll just see. Sorry to interrupt this bourbon hunt, but as you're gonna see in just a minute, with me and Jesse in line doubling up my bottles, this lottery is not gonna be budget friendly. Luckily, the folks at Shaker and Spoon decided to reach out and help us with our bourbon budget by sponsoring this video. For those that don't know, Shaker and Spoon is a monthly subscription box that includes everything you need, minus the spirit, to have a professional quality cocktail experience. These are so simple, it's difficult for even someone with my limited skill set to really mess these up. This one box makes four servings of three different drinks. Today, we're gonna make five sheets to the wind. We have five simple ingredients and three steps. Two ounces of rye whiskey, one ounce of five spice lemon cordial, two dashes of our Jerry Thomas decanter bitters. Fill the shaker with ice cubes and shake vigorously, vigorously. 
Strain into a Collins glass over freshly cubed ice, and then top with an ounce and a half of our sparkling yuzu juice. Stir softly to combine the ingredients, and then spritz it with our lemon oil. That's actually smelling surprisingly good. Oh, wow. That is better than anything I've ever created on my own. These shaker and spoon subscriptions start at about 50 bucks, but you can get $20 off your first box if you use the link in the description or code BRUZEL at checkout. I'm gonna get back to drinking this. Y'all get back to watching me spend my bourbon budget. I went straight from the airport to the whiskey drop and I got my name on the list. Hung out with everybody for an hour or so and I really need to go grab some food. So we've got a little free time here and we heard that Charred Oak here in town has a single barrel barrel strength Old Forester. Got a little hard time in the comments last time because I didn't pick one of those up in Vegas but we didn't have enough suitcase space to actually get those home. So we're gonna swing into Charred Oak Spirits real quick and see if they actually have this uh, single barrel barrel strength old forester all right picked up that store pick paid a little more for it than i would have got it for in vegas but got it and that cool bottle of old soul that i've never seen before so that's kind of interesting we'll have to give that a try here pretty soon so now we're just going to grab some food head back over and continue hanging out till tomorrow we called in a large pepperoni we're back here at the line, the camping, the tailgate, however you want to put it. We are back, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do for the next however many hours. It's only like, what is it, 8.30, 9 o'clock at night, and this whole thing doesn't start till tomorrow morning at around 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning. So I may see what these guys are watching back here on this TV or just head back over here to this group hanging out over there, talk about bourbon, have a good time for a while. I'll check in if anything interesting happens. Otherwise, I'll see y'all in the morning. So we've got a police officer over here just kind of perusing through the parking lot. Like when there's five or 10 people camping here, they usually don't care. The property owner's been by, they don't usually care. When there's like 70 people trying to camp in a parking lot, you always run the risk of somebody doing something dumb and getting it shut down. So we'll see. At this point, being 60 something in line, it wouldn't be bad if everybody got ran off. I might actually reshuffle and get a better but we made it through the night it was a bit of a long night but not a lot of sleep a lot of just sitting around hanging out they are setting up the tents over here behind me which will be where we go up and transition from our kind of gentleman's agreement line into their walk-up line and then we'll be assigned a time slot where we can come back and try to get some whiskey so we get in this line and then we can run and get breakfast or hang out or do whatever we want to do so we have got everybody neatly tucked into a single file line registration starts at about eight o'clock so we've got about 30 minutes everybody's seems to be getting along so far. Nobody really trying to skirt the rules or do anything crazy. Some of the folks that were marked off the list showed back up. They just went to the end of the line. So everything seems to be going smoothly so far. So we'll see if that keeps up. So this is what lucky people look like right here. They look like this guy. What's your name? John. John is number one in the sweepstakes line. Like he didn't have to stay here all night. He didn't have to sleep in his car. He rolls up here fresh as a freaking daisy and he's gonna get what? What's the, what's the pick? Crappy Van Winkle 23. So you're taking the 23 off table one. What's table two? Old Fitz 19 and Old Forest birthday birthday. And then you got a list of table three and four or you even care at that point, you're just saturated. <laughs> I, got, you're just I got a list of three and four. How many places did you enter for? Did you enter for all the locations? Yeah. So you entered for all of them and you won one here. Did you win any other place? No. We should just do away with this and make them choose one location, you think? Well, that gives you better odds if you pick them all. You shouldn't even have the ability to pick them all. Then it increases everybody's odds of winning where they're at. No, we're just bitter, man. We're just trying to make it harder on people that won. Like that's, we're just bitter. Never, I can't win. I'd never win anything. So what do you think about all this? Too many people, it's way too early. Then why are you here? For you. <laughs> Dang man doesn't even drink bourbon standing in line for bourbon all night slept in the car why don't you do that i have no explanation what bottle are you hoping to get is there something you think might be there that you're kind of excited about i don't like it my house okay that's the way i play it <laughs> <laughs> I, i'd rather be pleasantly surprised and assume something's gonna be there all right so we are all registered here we've got our walk-up ticket and i am number 63 in the official line we gained about four spots there and it looks like out of the first 25 there's five or six people 
people that didn't show up. They won top 25 in this lottery and they didn't even bother to show up, which is just freaking insane. Gonna miss out on some good bottles. I wish I could be so lucky, but we just gotta hang out now. Realistically, we could leave. We've got a time slot. We need to be back about 11.50. Right now it's nine o'clock and we need to be back by 11.50. Sometimes they go kind of quick though. So I'm going to just continue to hang out and uh, see what bottles people get, see the excitement. You know, hopefully in a couple hours, we'll be able to go in and get our turn. It's just a waiting game. We just wait and wait and wait some more until finally all of these people that are lucky have gone through the line and then all these unlucky people that dedicate way too much time to bourbon get their chance. All right, so they have gone through all of the lottery winners. They are done. And now a lot of the folks that were hanging out with us are starting to line up over here because they are top 25 in the uh, walk-up line. So the top 25 is about to go through. After that, it'll really start to shape up as to what bottles might potentially be there for us at 63. Our official number is 63. So just more waiting. But at least we got a comfy chair, nice cold Coca-Cola and we wait. All right, it's this time of day where I'm just very much past it. I've just had enough. I'm kind of done with this. Like the energy's completely gone and it's starting to catch up that I slept off and on for maybe an hour or two last night. So we made a quick Starbucks run, go to the restroom, load up on mocha frappa latte chinos and see if we can't power through this last hour to get a few bottles. For those out there that say just waiting in line is dumb, I kind of agree with you. Like this waiting in line is pretty dumb. And when it pays off, it pays off great. But the wait and not even knowing what you're going to get is kind of crazy. I, I wish there was a better system here in the state of Alabama, but like y'all tell me what's a better system. I don't know. You know, everybody's got a system. There's pros and cons to all of these. You're working relationships and then it's just whoever the guy likes or whatever. You've got full out lotteries where you buy tickets and chances and you know that's just kind of rewarding whoever can pay the most money and get the most chances or is lucky so I, I don't think there's a perfect system god does this one suck sometimes when i'm exhausted so apparently like you have to have an alabama id to be able to purchase and apparently somebody that's in line in front of us that's been waiting before i got here doesn't have an alabama id and they're not letting them in that sucks all right we are lined up and there are what, 13 or so 11 depending on whether or not they let them go that get to go in front of us and then we'll see what we get we'll see what all of the fuss what all of the wait was for well drama averted apparently they worked it out and they're gonna let them go in so good news for them maybe bad news for me because i'm gonna be like one person two person maybe out of the um eh taylor barrel proof wish me luck 63. It's all in all a pretty good haul. A long, exhausting freaking day. Way too much effort for what we got out of it. But I'll review those bottles here in a second when I get to the house. It's a month later and I forgot to actually film the haul to show y'all what all bottles we got. So let's go through that. First, there was table one and you can only get one bottle from table one. E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof, which I have not yet opened. He's still in here all nice and neat. Looking forward to giving this guy a try. Just haven't got around to opening it yet. So we had Jesse helping us out on these and he was supposed to get me another one of these. I ordered the bottles with a one, two, three, four, five, uh, of the options that might still be available, but he just went down the list and found the first one that was on the list, not the one that had the one next to it. Like I didn't write the names down. The state gave us a list and I put a number next to it. We had a little miscommunication. So he tried to get a Weller 12. I did not want a Weller 12. So after I told him about his mistake, he was able to go back and get a Blanton straight from the barrel. So this was the one I was looking for. That's a pretty good consolation prize. So these were our Table ones can only get one bottle from it. So table two, we can get two bottles. And I'd never had a Willet Purple Top, so that is what we got two of, two beautiful Willet Purple Tops. And this is actually a fantastic pour. And it's a, it's a store pick, as I think a lot of these Purple Tops are. So single barrel store pick from Alabama ABC. And our second bottle from table two, were these Stag Juniors, no longer Juniors, these Stags. I did get two of these bottles, but one of them has found another home. So don't have that one to show you, but we did get two of these Stag Juniors. Table three is where it gets a little more out of hand. So I, I'm, I'm forgetting here what was on table three and table four. So we'll just go through the rest of the bottles randomly. We grabbed a couple of Elijah Craig 18s, which I like, but don't love. Like they're 18 years old, super oaky, proof down. So they're interesting to have, but 
but not something I go to an awful lot. And then we got a couple of Buffalo Trace store picks here. And of course, a couple of Blantons, as we do at just about every one of these Alabama drops. And that's pretty much what we got at the lottery. Now, I did buy a couple of other bottles while we were waiting around. We went and grabbed dinner and another local store had an Old Forester single barrel, barrel proof store pick. I also found this Old Soul 10 type series there, which I'm looking forward to giving a try. And somebody had bought a bunch of these Whistle Pig 12s on clearance. So I was able to get this guy at like half MSRP. So I took that one as well. So overall, not our biggest haul, but I'm extremely happy with what we were able to get out of this lottery. But this may be the last time we get this. It looks like Alabama is swapping their system up a little bit. So I'm not sure how that's going to impact things moving forward, but this is how you get bourbon in Alabama.